No, your body doesn't keep the score. And the uncomfortable sensations in your body are not all trauma. In fact, that's a pretty big misunderstanding of what trauma actually is. Hey everybody, my name is Leah Benson and I'm a licensed body-based psychotherapist, coach, and psychedelic guide in Tampa Bay. And today, I'm gonna catch you up on the 21st century science of psychotherapy because there are some popular ideas out there from the 1900s that make it a lot harder for you to tend to your own mental health. Once upon a time, therapy was a big mystery. Now, it's all over the internet. And if you're looking for it, you've probably heard about trauma therapy, somatic therapy, evidence-based therapy, and maybe you've even heard of a very famous book called The Body Keeps the Score that put the idea of incorporating the body with therapy into the spotlight. And just so you don't get the idea that I'm against the methods proposed in that book, or that I think somatic therapy doesn't work, let me just say, loud and clear, I believe in the value of somatic therapy and in a lot of the methods proposed in the book. What I don't believe is the alleged science in the book. And I don't believe a well-marketed idea called polyvagal either. And they're both very popular right now because ever since cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT rose to prominence for being evidence-based, many therapists have been desperate to find a way to legitimize their methods with science. Because right now, that's what sells therapy. <sighs> Unfortunately, the stuff in that book and in the polyvagal story is falsified science. In other words, it's outdated pseudoscience. And it has put therapists right back at square one of scientific illegitimacy. That is, unless they know about 21st century brain science, which we'll get to, but first, here's a brief summary of the outdated pseudoscience. You have three brains in your brain, a primitive one, an emotional one, and a rational one that there are centers and systems in your brain that underlie the psychological things you experience. Your nervous system scans for safety or danger, and your autonomic nervous system has three branches, not two. Again, that's the pseudoscience. Now, here's the 21st century science, meaning the latest best guess of science about how the brain and body work. And by best guess, I don't mean it's unsupported by data. I mean, it's what most of the data support. So here we go, your brain is one thing, not three. It's a network, and that's not a metaphor. You have a brain because you have a body that moves. Everything it does, including generating psychological experiences, is for maintaining that body with maximum energy efficiency. Next, your brain doesn't scan for anything, much less safety or danger. It's a predictive organ, so it produces your perceptions, your cognitions, and your emotions proactively. 24-7. Next, the autonomic nervous system has two branches, an action side and a resting side, known scientifically as sympathetic and parasympathetic. And physiologists are in total agreement about this. <laughs> Next, the vagus nerve sends and receives sensory and motor information just like every other nerve. That's it. There's no special system of social engagement that it coordinates. Physiologists are also very clear on this. Next, the body doesn't keep the score. The body simply reflects patterns that the brain generates 
predictively based on past experiences. In other words, the brain keeps the score. And the body is the scorecard. Like a scorecard, the body is a reflection of the past that we can see in the present. This isn't semantics, as is often suggested by people who want to keep using falsified science and outdated pseudoscientific metaphors to explain therapy. And it matters to you because if you believe these stories, you are less likely to understand the profound efficacy that you have over changing the way your mental health feels to you. For instance, if you believe the lie that you have primitive and emotional brains inside yourself, that you have to keep control over with your rational brain, you are a perpetual victim to these mythical, wily regions inside you. And it can only mean one of two things when you're not able to be rational. If you can't, no matter how hard you try, you're mentally ill. And if you don't by choice, you're a terrible person and probably a narcissist or a sociopath. Without breaking down every falsehood in detail and boring you to death, I'll just tell you what the best guess of emotion science and brain function says, how that helps you with your day-to-day -day mental health, and what it means about somatic therapy. First and foremost, your brain constructs every moment of your experience in real time before you're aware of it, which means that your emotions only happen to you because you create them. This may sound good and it may sound bad depending on how responsible you want to be for changing your mental reality. Either way, it's what the best guess of science says. It means that you may need to dial back your mental health to the basics of sleep, food, and movement in the here and now before you start tackling the stories of how your past traumas, big or small, might be affecting your current life. It means that before you decide you're mentally ill or call yourself a narcissist, you can see your irrational or selfish decisions from the perspective of simple energy function and make choices that don't turn into deeper black holes because you just hate yourself or don't care anymore. It means that before you call the way you feel in your body a trauma response, or let anyone else tell you that's what it is, you understand the economy that your brain is running and that many of those behaviors make perfect rational sense from its energy economy perspective. Yes, you may have had negative past experiences. You may have automatic body attitudes and energy states that do not match the ones that would serve you better in your present day situations. But that's not a reflection of your primitive or emotional brain, and it's not because your nervous system is always scanning for safety or danger. It's that your brain is running a model that was built over your lifetime of how to regulate your energy in various contexts. Sometimes that model is extremely out of sync with your current needs, and so are the stories you are telling yourself to make sense of that energy status. But when you understand your mental health from the energy perspective and expose yourself to experiences that will update your model, your life will change. Somatic therapy exposes you to new ways to physically embody your memories. It can teach you new ways to observe and manipulate your nervous system through actions and mindset. It exposes you to a person in the form of a therapist who is kind, and patient with you while you struggle and while you practice new behaviors and ways of thinking. This kind and patient relationship may itself, it is a part of updating your model. Because in most people's models, they don't have someone who helped them learn to conform to social reality on their own timeline. Most people had caregivers who didn't have the time or the energy to be patient while they expressed all their feelings about life, their feelings about what was expected of them, 
and their feelings about what is expected of them and how hard it all feels. Building a model of a kind and patient caregiver inside of you is a massive bonus to your mental health. It's how you aren't alone when you feel most alone and anguished in the future. There's nothing mystical about what happens in somatic therapy and nothing mysterious about good mental health. It's all about how you manage your energy, mentally and physically, and whether that matches up with the environment you happen to be in at any given moment. You can manage it. It's not mysterious, it's simple. And you can have help if you want it. And if the idea of asking for help seems weird or stupid or ill-advised, well, that's because the idea of getting help with your emotional life is not a part of your current model. And that's probably because you've been taught all along to figure it out yourself. But now's your chance. You have the power. It's your model to update anytime you want. And if you want my help, you'll find me at leahbensontherapy.com. See you next time.